Welcome to Nebby Invest the World. It's really interesting times right now we've got in the markets. Uh, we're seeing the in volatility start to increase, some big down days on the NASDAQ, S&P, the American markets, and some of those, um, we'll call them some of those markets darlings have taken a beating in recent days. Tesla down 21%. But uh, is that a sign of bubbles popping or is that a sign that maybe you should buy in? So I'm just going to go through some of the charts, um, some, some of the uh, market charts, um, commodity charts, and even some company charts for the, today's video. First stop is the NASDAQ. So this is just goes back a year. And we've seen a real solid uptrend since about uh, March or the beginning of April. And that is a classic uptrend. So the last three trading days, we've seen it come back a bit. But I think at this stage, it's reached a bit of support line. You can just see that, uh, that big red bar down today. It's reached the highs we saw in July, start of August. So August was a big up day, up month, I should say. So we saw some really rapid increases. And once you see those rapid increases, you should see, you know, market should take a bit of a breath. Uh, but I think um, the fact that we've had these two really big down days, one last week and again overnight or today or yesterday, depending when you listen to this, um, is a little bit of a concern. So I, I wouldn't say this is the NASDAQ pop bubble popping. Um, the question is, is the NASDAQ in a bubble? Um, you, know, you could argue either way at this stage, um, but it, I think the question is, is the last three days a sign of the bubble popping? I'm undecided right now. I don't think it is right now. It's reached a level of support. We're still in an uptrend. And I think the next four or five days were very important to see how we're going to be heading through the next, say, month or three months. Uh, the S&P 500, it's, uh, with those three down days, it's now reached the, or just gone below the February highs. So this is, again, just a healthy retracement potentially. And I think the next few days will be very important as we move forward, as I mentioned with the NASDAQ. So I think nothing to see here, nothing to worry about at this stage. Uh, once we go overseas markets, the FTSE 100 is a little bit different. Now, the American markets, uh, it's really been rallying on those really high-favoured tech stocks. Those are the ones that have been doing all the pulling and pushing. Uh, when Once you go to the England markets, uh, we haven't got those tech stocks there, those really big tech stocks. And although it has recovered from the lows in at the end of March, it's starting to sort of roll over. You can just see here, reached a bit of a high, start of June, and then we've got lower highs and then lower lows. And I think overnight, once the market opens down to FTSE, we're going to see it go below 5,800, 5, which would be another low. So we're rolling over. This is a little bit more concerning chart than I'm looking at here. So not the best uh, look for the FTSE 100. But once we go to the DAX, DAX, the German market, looks fairly solid. Um, you could say it's maybe consolidating a little bit, but still good uptrend here. Nothing to worry about with the German market which may be more representative of the European since now. The FTSE is, you know, the England market is outside the European Union. Um, showing VIX here. So this is just volatility. And uh, we can see sort of a reverse of the, what the markets do, if you don't know what the VIX is. Um, so even though S&P and NASDAQ, whoop, even thought. Even though S&P and NASDAQ reaching all-time highs, something that is interesting, so it's reaching all-time highs, but the VIX actually remained fairly high. So you can actually um, model or graph the VIX when it reaches, or the VIX at numbers when it's when the S&P and NASDAQ is reaching high. Typically, it should be low, the VIX, but it's actually remained a little bit elevated. And we actually saw that before in 1999, 2000. I was trying to find a graph of that, but I couldn't find one. So that's a touch concerning. I'm not too worried yet, but that's something just to keep an eye on, I think, for the future. Uh, Apple, so I'm just going to go through some individual stocks here. So this is just the, uh, the daily chart from the past, past year in Apple. 
And you can see just a really, ex I wouldn't call this exponential growth, but it's been a very solid growth from uh, the end of March. Uh, so this is stock split adjusted, those prices there. So it's about as low as almost $50. Uh, would have been a great time to buy. Uh, so I ran hard in August. So at the start of August, it was around about 96 and went up to 136, so almost a, almost a 50% rise in August. Uh, and then it's pulled back to 112. So this is maybe what you call just a healthy retracement. I'm calling that at the stage. But uh, Apple is is expensive when you look at historical uh, totals when, when you compare its PV, PE right now to compare to historical PE totals. So I think the whole mantra of buying what you know, your circle of competence. I have a feeling a lot of these companies are running hard because of that. A lot of money piling, retail money piling into these companies because people hear that mantra and are buying these stocks without even looking at valuation. Five weekly, five year weekly Amazon shows that exponential growth uh, since March. So it's really gone up at a, a really elevated level. Uh, that growth rate is quite probably too high, but Amazon does have a lot of tailwinds behind it. Uh, increasing in the online shopping space, I think will only increase uh, going forward. So Amazon is in well, you can say it's a very well placed business to really take uh, take advantage of growing trends in the world. Um, you could wait for a pullback, but uh, who knows how far it's going to come down. We didn't see much of a decrease during the COVID crisis. In fact, uh, hardly a decrease, and it's just gone forward at leaps and bounds. An amazing company, but valued quite high. But um, I don't know. This is a company where if you do wait for a time to buy, that time to buy may never happen. So maybe just jump in soon and then hope just keeps going up. Tesla, if you had to pick a company that really was showing bubble signs, it was Tesla. Uh, the phenomenal increase in price, we have seen it just exponentially grow since uh, the lows in COVID, which was down as low as about $70 or just above $70. And it's now went from 70 to about 500. Uh, extraordinary company, I must say. Tesla has a, a really bright future. It did get as high as 500 uh, just after the split, but it did fall 21% on 8th September. That's a concerning decrease in price, but as hit support area. So got down 3321. If you go across here to end of July, start of August, we did see a bit of a consolidation period uh, after it got to those highs and then just bounced up. So it might consolidate in going forward over the next few days. Uh, so this could be a good time to buy for supporters of Tesla. I'm a big supporter of Tesla, I think, uh, and Elon Musk. So though I'm not a holder of Tesla, I believe Tesla could be the future, um, especially what they're doing, not only with their car manufacturing, but other things they're doing. So uh, this could be a good time to buy for supporters of the company. But... Beware. So this is just a five-year weekly chart. It does show a typical bubble exponential growth. So um, euphoria, you could say, one, once you see euphoria in the market, you just see this exponential growth. So when you're talking about share market, any sort of market really, uh, you compare it, it's very psychological. So it's talking about fear and greed. And typically fear is a much more powerful emotion uh, than greed. That's why you see uh, big drops in market uh, compared to large increases. But when you see rapid increases in share prices, it's typical of bubble territory. And you might say Tesla has reached that bubble criteria when you're looking at share price. Um, it's but uh, who knows? You know, um, if it ever got down to about sixty dollars, eighty dollars, that sort of range, well, I probably would buy. Um, staying out of the market now, I think there is a bit of risk, but I think there are some supporters who might be buying now because it's reached that support line. Uh, just going to some commodities here. Gold uh, looks really healthy at the moment, still healthy. We're in a consolidation period right now. 
remaining in an uptrend. Nothing wrong with this uh, price remaining a bit stable here. And, and you can see that in the um, weekly chart. Uh, it has gone through the roof the last uh, year, over a year or so. So since about July last year. So time to buy gold was at that breakout. Uh, between 1,300 and 1,400, we got to uh, you know about a four-year high then, and uh, just after that, the weeks after that, it just consolidated right on 1,400. That would have been the time to buy, and it's just been going up since. This could be just a bit of a consolidation period. A um, lot of proponents of gold have been buying in just because of the weakening economies. It's sort of weird to see gold prices increasing and a lot of uh, the stock market increasing uh, going along with it. Uh, I think that's sort of a uh, two different points of view in the market. Ones that are strong on gold because they believe the economy and markets should be weaker, and those who believe, um, you know, those who are entering the market, the equities are because the stimulus for first of all, and then all other asset classes. There's not much value there, not much show return you're going to get from that. And that's why they're going into the equities market. So gold players have been doing well. Equity players have been doing well as long as well. And it's very rare to see both doing well at the same time. Looking at uh, Brett Oil. So we have seen it recover quite well, but uh, share price has been under attack the last um, week or so. So it got to as high as $46 or $46.5. Now back down below 40 on increased volume too, but um, uh, the time to, time to buy some oil plays was way back uh, in before May when it reached those lows, but um, interesting to see how this goes forward. Uh, government yields. Um, we've seen um, yields have fallen the last few days just because uh, investors are wary and they're moving into bonds or safer assets. Sort of uh, doing sweet, fuck all, that's what I've been saying. Uh, should I say that word? But, but it's been consolidating, um, but, um, you know, um, something I'm not interested in at the moment is the bond yields until we see an uptrend, and there is no signs of an uptrend yet, just consolidating. Something I am keeping an eye on is uranium, close, close eye. Uh, typically, when uranium booms, it booms quickly and fast and hard. So keeping a very close eye on this uh, uranium, it is in potentially an uptrend. We're seeing uranium mines in Kazakhstan closed down because of COVID-19 and those future prices uh, have been going up. The last um, month or so has come back from $34 to $31, but this is something that I'm interested in buying for the future. Uh, back to the uh, Australian markets. So I, if you don't know, I'm in Australia. Uh, locally, the XJO, um, what can I say, is boring as bat. It's been range trading between 5,900 and 6,200 since June. So it's really struggled to break above 6,200. It's gone to it about three times. So it's gone to it at the start of June. I'll just point to it. Here, got close here and almost three times here. And it's always bounced back. But every time it's gone to 5,900, it's bounced off that too. So here, here, here. Today, with the big down day in American markets, we should see it go below 5,900, but then will it go back up? So I think there might be a bit of strength. If it does go below 5,900, it could be some buying opportunity there, and then it might rebound off that. And then, of course, uh, what happens in the American markets over the next few days will be important. We could see uh, this be a start of a downtrend in the Australian markets or the beginning of an uptrend uh, or back to, to 6,200 levels. So that's the question. Will it stay under 5,900? Uh, I think the next few days will play out, but sort of boring, nothing too exciting there. And last of all, uh, one of the most exciting companies on the ASX, uh, Brainchip. So congratulations to Brainchip holders who have done very well since say May, June. Prices were down to five cents, now it's up to 73 cents. I had a quick look at this, so I started this video just before, just after the markets opened and it was holding up very well. I think I was up to 75 cents last time I looked, so it's holding up very well today. 
But you have to be very wary with charts like this because it's just gone through exponential growth. Once you see this, you tend to get a lot of uh, profit takers who try to bring the price down. And if we don't have buyers coming into the market to take those shares off those sellers, you could see a bit of a retracement back into the share price. So be very wary of, of uh, companies like this. Well, shouldn't say companies like this. Be very wary of when you see exponential growth like this. You can always see price come back a bit. Doesn't mean sell out, but just be very wary. Maybe tuck, take some profit off the off the table. But uh, it's a very exciting company, so I'm very exciting. What very excited and what Brainship does. Might do a video on them in the future. Very excited what they do, and I can under, completely understand why the market is very excited about Brainship. I think the valuation of Brainship now is about a billion dollars, so it's getting quite rich. But uh, what they do, they you could see in five, ten years, it can be substantially higher than a billion dollars, especially if they succeed. So that's all for an Epi Invest the World. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Now I'm not a professional advisor, so if you do need advice, uh, make sure you seek out those professionals who can give you that. But that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video.